Hi, I'm John with AppliancePartsPros.com. Today we're going to be showing you how to repair your appliance. Remember that anytime you work on an appliance, make sure that it is unplugged or the circuit breaker is turned off so there is no chance of electrocution. We're going to show you how to install a new hub for your GE washer. It's an easy job that only requires a quarter inch nut driver, a 5 16 inch nut driver, a Torx T15 screwdriver, a Torx T25 screwdriver, a flat blade screwdriver, a putty knife, a ratchet with 7 16 inch socket, and a spanner wrench. When you open the package, you'll get one new hub assembly. The reason why you'd be replacing the hub is if the washer won't agitate, if there's excessive shaking or movement, or if there's an odd noise during use. To access the part, we're going to need to remove this entire top panel along with this control panel. You're going to need to use a Torx T15 screwdriver to loosen and remove the four screws that hold this control panel in place. With the screws removed, tilt forward and then lift up slightly on the control panel, which will release these mounting tabs. Remove the hose that goes to the water level switch. And then just set down the control panel for now. Use a putty knife to press in and release the two tabs that hold the front panel in place. Tilt down the panel, then lift up and remove the entire front panel assembly. You'll need to use a quarter inch nut driver to loosen and remove the two screws that hold the top panel in place. Take the control panel and roll it backwards. And then locate and disconnect the wiring harness that goes to the lid switch. Afterwards, you can remove the entire top panel assembly. You'll need to use a quarter inch nut driver to loosen and remove the five screws that hold the metal panel in place. Slide forward the top panel assembly to release it, and then you can just rotate it around to the side. Use a 5 16 inch nut driver to loosen and remove the four screws that hold these tub restraints in place. We'll now need to remove this tub cover that's held in place by a series of plastic clips. Pull up to release each of the clips. Then, remove the tub cover. You'll need to remove the agitator assembly. To do so, grab it in the middle and pull straight up and it should unclip. Use a ratchet with a 7 16 inch socket to loosen and remove the bolt that holds the washer agitator coupler in place. Then, remove the washer agitator coupler. You'll need to use a spanner wrench to loosen and remove the hub nut. Install the wrench on the nut. Then, using a hammer, tap on the wrench to loosen the nut in a clockwise direction. Then, remove the hub nut. With the hub nut removed, you can now lift up and remove the drum assembly. Turn the tub upside down so you can now access the series of bolts that hold the hub in place. Use a Torx T25 screwdriver to loosen and remove the eight retaining screws. With the screws removed, you can now remove the old hub. Here's the old hub next to the new one. If you already have the new part, great. If not, you can get it from AppliancePartsPros.com. Position the new hub on the bottom of the drum assembly. Then, thread in and tighten the eight retaining screws.
with the new hub assembly in place, turn the drum back over so it's upright, and then you can reinstall it in the machine. Reinstall the drum assembly, making sure that it is centered on the drive shaft. Thread on the hub nut, then tighten it in a counterclockwise direction. Next, use the spanner wrench to tighten the hub nut. Reinstall the washer agitator coupler. Then thread in and tighten the bolt that retains the coupler. Reinstall the agitator. Simply align it, push it straight down, and it should clip into place. Position the tub cover on top of the drum. Then press it down so the mounting clips engage. Reconnect the tub restraints. Then use a 5 16 inch nut driver to thread in and tighten the retaining screws. Reposition the top control panel assembly, locking the tabs into place on both sides. Then we're going to need to thread in and tighten the five retaining screws that hold it in place. Position the top panel, then reconnect the wiring harness that goes to the lid switch. Thread in and tighten the two screws that hold the top panel in position. Position the front panel assembly, then position the top of the panel and then press it into place. On the back side of the control panel, reconnect the hose that goes to the water level switch. We'll now need to position the control panel so that each of these tabs goes into the openings. Position it and then roll it backwards into place. And then thread it and tighten the four retaining screws that hold the control panel in place. reconnect the power cord, and then your appliance should be ready for use. Thanks for joining us for another successful repair brought to you by AppliancePartsPros.com. And be sure to check out our other repair videos on our website, on our Facebook page, and on our YouTube channel.